In this chapter, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the various tool chains and languages that support compilation to WebAssembly. So far, we've taken a look at, at MScript, which allows you to compile C and C++ code to WebAssembly. And we've looked at how WASMPAC uh, is the Rust tool chain that allows you to target WebAssembly. In this video, I'm going to take a look at AssemblyScript. Now, AssemblyScript is a little bit different from the, the previous two in that AssemblyScript is a new language which targets WebAssembly. However, it's, it's not an entirely new language in that it's based heavily on TypeScript, so it's a, a familiar language for JavaScript developers. Once again, I'm not going to cover the, uh, the steps and instructions for um, installing the AssemblyScript toolchain. You can find those on the web yourself. I'm just going to dive straight in with VS Code. Now, as you can see, this project follows a relatively conventional um, sort of template for a JavaScript pro project. We've got a package JSON, we've got node modules, tests, and so on. So it's a, a familiar development environment for JavaScript developers. And here is the actual code that I'm going to compile to WebAssembly. Once again, it's a simple hello world uh, uh, greeting uh, back, to, back to the JavaScript host environment. So let's have a look at compiling that. So I'm going to run the assembly script build. And as you can see, once the build is, is successful, um, a new folder is added to the project. And once again, we can see a WebAssembly file. So this is the output of building that Hello World application. And this one's really quite small. It's just a three kilobyte file. You can also see that the, the compilation process outputs the same module in WebAssembly text format, and there are source maps as well. One notable difference here is that while MScript and Rust generate project-specific uh, JavaScript uh, binding files, uh, AssemblyScript takes a different approach and doesn't do that. So let's look at how this module is loaded within the browser. So here I'm using the AssemblyScript loader, and the load, it's the loader's responsibility to provide the, the sort of bindings required to return strings and other rich types from WebAssembly into, back into the JavaScript environment. So you can see here that we're accessing the greet function, which is exported from our, our WebAssembly um, module, and get string, which is uh, which provides the ad adapter required to extract the string from linear memory, as we've learned elsewhere in this um, in this uh, in this course. So let's have a look at that running within a browser. So if I open up my browser, and here you can see I'm I'm logging the the response from my WebAssembly module to the console. So we'll do the same steps that we did with the other examples just to demonstrate it really is working. So let's update the greeting wait for the recompilation. And if we look back in the browser, we can see it's live reloaded and it's it's reporting hello world with a, a number of exclamation marks. So once again, let's have a look at doing something a little bit more, um, a little bit more involved with assembly script. So once again, we're going to do exactly the same thing and render a Mandelbrot fractal. So again, this this code is is um, fairly typical for rendering a Mandelbrot. It's pretty much a like-for-like -like copy of my original C++ code with the addition of, of types and so on as required by the assembly script language. So nothing terribly interesting there. Now, what we'll see here is a bit of a notable difference. With MScriptum, we were using the SDL APIs to write to the canvas. With um, Rust and Wasmpack, we were using the WebSys crate to create a canvas directly from within Rust. Now, AssemblyScript has neither of these. What we're doing is we're just returning the um, array buffer which stores our Mandelbrot. So as well as uh, changing the code for my AssemblyScript application, let's tell you what, let's, let's save and build that while I'm, while I'm talking, as well as updating the code that uh, renders the, the Mandelbrot from my assembly script code, we're also going to have to update the host. So let's have a look at that. So my WebAssembly module now exports the Mandelbrot fr um, function, and it also exports a method a method that allows me to get a reference to the data buffer that, that the Mandelbrot's written to. And the task of, of um, copying this to my canvas is something that I'm having to do directly in the host. AssemblyScript doesn't, doesn't support uh, APIs for manipulating canvases, for example. So let's save that. And if we return to the page, which is live reloaded, once again, we can see that it's rendered a Mandelbrot set. 
So hopefully what you've seen from the progression from uh, mscripten through wasmpack and rust and assembly script is whilst c++ rust assembly scripts all target webassembly the the uh, tool chains themselves differ considerably you get a very different experience from one to the other